I'd like to start by just giving a line from the Matrix. I believe it's the second Matrix of the Matrix Trilogy. And the line I'm going to share with you all is, the problem is choice. The problem is choice. That's why you've come here to go inside your mind, because you're going to give your self the opportunity to dip into choiceless awareness. Choice is the problem. Uh, there is no choice in heaven, there is no choice in nirvana, there is no choice in oneness. And though the ego has invented this concept of choice and has actually convinced the sleeping mind that choice is fun, uh, I'm here to tell you that choice is no fun at all. But everything that the ego made can be used by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can use choice in a fun way. But choice in and of itself doesn't exist, and choice in and of itself is not fun. Given over to the Holy Spirit, you can have fun with it. But without the Holy Spirit, choice will drive you nuts. It will make you mad. You will feel insane. You will feel always constantly judging that you've somehow made the wrong choice, or that you could have made a better choice, or that in your lifetime you could have made better choices, that things could have been different. You could have been much happier if you'd made different choices when you were young. Having established that choice is the problem, and that's why you actually come to a silent retreat to give your mind a chance to dip into, to tap into that stillness, that space in which you are not engaged in choice. Sometimes in, in quantum physics they call it the quantum field. Rumi, the poets, Rumi one time said, you know, there is a field, I will meet you there. He's a mystic poet. He was talking about the, the unified field, the quantum field, this place of stillness in which there is nothing to decide. You can just Im have a feel for how relaxing that is when you've been accustomed, or we could say addicted to choice, that there actually is a place in your mind in which there is nothing to decide. And the Holy Spirit's job is to use what the ego made, use choice, in such a directed way that it literally takes you out of choice. Just like the Holy Spirit uses time to teach you that there is no time, the Holy Spirit uses choice to teach you that there is no choice. And there's a borderland that you cross as you get close to this field. You might say that's like the gates of heaven when you're getting close to the gates, where in this borderland there still seems to be decisions in the borderland. You're, you're, you haven't crossed over yet to choiceless awareness, but you, you still seem to be decisions. But you start to have the awareness that all of the decisions have already been made. They're all part of a prearranged plan. The script is written. So when you're crossing the borderland, it's like you can, you can observe the decisions. There's, but there's an ease that starts to come in because they've already all been made. So it's more like you're just watching a movie, and there still seems to be decisions a part of the movie, but they've already been made. And it's very relaxing. Not as relaxing as the next step, choiceless awareness. There's nothing more relaxing than that. But it's like the Spirit's easing you in to choiceless awareness, using choice for a little while in a beautiful, directed, guided way. So that's why we say that you are sustained by guidance. You aren't really sustained by food or clothing or warmth or houses. Uh, you're not sustained by money and the things that money can buy. You really are sustained by guidance. But that's because the guidance is going to take you through this borderland and to a hopping off point, which we could call as choiceless awareness. And at the experience of choiceless awareness, there is no need for guidance. You've reached the end of the road. You've reached the point where you're returning to the innocence 
that you already were and always have been. So it's not often that you have such a dedicated time as like a month where everyone has come to join in the same purpose and where there may be some, some light things that demand your attention. I've understood Suzanne was saying that people would have little areas to watch over, but it's much simpler in this world to just have a little area than to try to juggle many complexities. Many complexities are a big distraction to coming to this stillness. And it's easy to get all wrapped up into the, the complexities and the doings and believe that you're actually making meaningful decisions and you're actually working your way through a process towards future enlightenment. It's a sneaky trick, but it's all part of the mesmerism. It's all part of the distraction against dipping into this choiceless awareness. So you might say that the silent retreat gives you an opportunity to watch your thoughts, to simplify your mind, to in one sense kind of slow down, slow down the pace where you're not taken away by the distractions of the busyness. It's more like you can just observe it and watch it. If you don't really want to be distracted deep down, you won't be distracted. The power of the mind is so strong that if you start to notice a few things and they seem to be distracting, you know, you can just relax and just watch them and let the spirit carry you inwards and past them. You don't really have to give yourself over. You don't want to give your mind over to those thoughts. They're just trying to take your awareness away from the stillness.